Are we all set? Can you hear me well? Yes, 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 yes. 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 can hear you. Yes, fine. Dorothy. Yeah. Fernando, are you there? Yes, I'm here with Dorothy. Perfect. So we're lucky to have apparently colleagues from Roxlaw online, so we'll we'll do it in English. Is that okay? Perfect. Yes. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Welcome, welcome everyone. So, I think, we, we are on time. so I think we are on time, so if, if, if you don't mind, we will start this Arcus Tower. I would like to welcome everyone, I'm speaking to everyone from the University of Minho uh, here in Braga. This is the hall from, of our central library and uh, we are here to start this hour with, in which we intend to disseminate Arcus. And, to make everyone excited with Arcus and everyone getting involved with Arcus because they know it well, they know it better. So it is my great pleasure to introduce the initiative and our guests. I will, I will start with our guests because of course they are very, very important. And if you, if you don't mind, I will start with our guests which are at the University of Granada. So I'll introduce first Professor Dorothy Kelly. Uh, Professor Dorothy Keller is the coordinator of the Alliance. So University of Granada is the uh, university that is coordinating this Alliance. She's vice director for internationalization and ARCUS coordinator. She has had a number of positions in European level, in, in European organizations, such as being the chair of the executive board of the Coimbra group with, for seven years, being a board member of the Committee for Internationalization and Development Cooperation of the Spanish Rector's Conference for a number of years, uh, being the executive secretary of that same organ also for quite some time. She's a member of the Spanish Bologna Expert Team from 21 to 2013, member of the advisory group on higher education to the steering committee for education policy and practice of the Council of Europe since 2017. And on her, on her daily basis, she's full professor of translation, specializing in translator education, intercultural studies and directionality. So Dorothy, thank you very, very much for being with us today. It's a great pleasure. I would just like to add, if there's one person in the world that is able to put several minds into a consensus, that's Professor Dorothy Kelly. And so thank you, thank you also for all that you're doing in that direction. I would also like to introduce uh, Fernando Galan. Fernando Galan, he's our consortium manager, so he's also based at the University of Granada. And he uh, is a, a, um, a young colleague, but has loads of experience in terms of European higher education. So he's been former head of international engagement of the Spanish Rector's Conference, policy officer for the European Association for Studies in Higher Education, if I'm, if I'm correctly translating the URASH acronym. And he's also uh, president, been president of the European Students' Union and a member of the Bologna follow-up group board and of different ex expert groups at the European Union, the Council of Europe, UNESCO and OECD among others. And Fernando, of course, is, I, I can testify for that, massively uh, efficient. He's, he's, he's able to actually help us all in 10 seconds before we, ask, uh, before we ask help sometimes. So thank you, Fernando, also for being with us. And of course, from the University of Minho, we have Professor Rui Vieira de Castro, our rector. He will also be joining us and he'll be the first to speak in a, mo in a few minutes. And we have our Duarte, our president of the uh, uh, Students Association, Duarte Lopes, that we are also very proud that he was elected uh, as member of, uh, president of the Student Council of our Alliance. And so this is our, our uh, guests. We wish to have a very uh, first interesting and dynamic session with lots of conversations. And this is what Arcus Hour is about. We have 60 minutes, so I hope you have questions and I hope you, you bring them forward quickly because we only have 50 minutes. But first, we will have an introduction to the, 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 the Alliance by today, by Dorothy and, and Fernando as well, so we can set and set the scene. The Arcus Hour uh, came about when we realized that the best way that we could make Arcus um, um, of, of knowledge to everyone in the Alliance 
was exactly through inviting the leaders, those who are, have been leading the alliance and those who are coordinating the alliance to speak to everyone about how has it been? What is it that has been done? What is it that the alliance is actually being successfully able to help us all with? And so this is, this is the origin of the Arcus Tower. We will have a number of sessions starting from today. And in every session, there will be different leaders from the alliance telling us the newcomers and the rest of the world, of course, what's been going on. And in that sense, we hope we can get better idea how to get involved because an alliance is exactly that, is what everyone involved makes it makes the alliance being. So you, you, you're part of building it. So hopefully at the end of this Argus Hour, we will all be more aware of how we can participate, how we can contribute, and of course, be more excited and more engaged. So I forgot to say who I am. I'm Manuel João Costa. I'm the pro-rector here at the University of Minho for um, Student Affairs and Innovations in Teaching and Learning. And it's my pleasure to host you today and maybe in, a, in some of the future sessions. So having given you a bit of context of the initiative, I will now pass the floor to our rector, uh, Professor Rui Vieira de Castro. Thank you, Manuel, for your presentation and uh, um, good afternoon to, to everyone. Let me start by greeting all the participants, uh, Dorothy Kelly, thank you very much for being with us and Fernando in this, in this session. Uh, uh, special thanks to all our colleagues from the University of Wroclaw. It's a great pleasure for us also to have you with us. Uh, uh, and, of course, uh, Manuel João Costa and, and Duarte Lopes, who are uh, two key persons in all uh, this, uh, this process in the involvement of the university in Arcus, in Arcus Alliance. And, of course, thank you also for all the other participants, the students and uh, uh, academic and non-academic staff from the University of Minho that are present uh, in this first Arcus uh, hour. Uh, some some in, in introductory uh, uh, words about the meaning for the University of Minho uh, of, of our involvement in this in this uh, alliance. I think it's it's clear for for everyone that uh, internationalization is a goal of the universities, and it's a goal of the universities since the beginning of the universities. Uh, it was for us for those who have been in the. Uh, the last annual conference of Arcus in, uh, in uh, the University of Padua. To, it was very, very stimulating to see in those walls of the Palazzo del Bo the, the hundreds of coats of arms of uh, former students who have been there along, along the centuries. And that, that is a clear sign that since the universities was, were founded as, as, as institutions, that this idea of gathering people from different contexts was present to, to uh, everyone. And it is, of course, the case of the University of Minho. We, we, we are younger, much younger than the University of Padua. But uh, uh, since the beginning, uh, we tried to define a clear, a clear strategy for the internationalization of the university. And uh, of course, that for historical and cultural reasons, we tried and we are always trying to develop our links with universities from the Portuguese speaking countries, both uh, in uh, Asia, in Africa, or in South America. Of course, we developed uh, some special links with universities uh, uh, in uh, Latin America and, uh, and uh, in, uh, in North America, but we never forget, we never forget that European higher education area is essential for the uh, establishment and for development of our uh, international links. Uh, and uh, it, is, it is as it has been, and we want to continue uh, in this, in this uh, perspective. Actually, if we consider, for, for instance, the mobility of our students and staff the European master programs in which we are involved, the research projects that we share with, Port with, with European partners, or if we consider uh, paper co-authorship, uh, it is clear for us the relevance uh, of our international, and this means namely European, European links. Uh, 
and this possibility that we had and that we developed along the times of uh, uh, strengthening more and more our links with these partners is in the basis of the great development that, that the university knew along these last, last decades. As we all know, university alliances are a reality in the European higher education area. And it is, it is a recent reality, but the relevance of it uh, is shown by the number of alliances, alliances that we have today uh, in, 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 in Europe and the number also of the institutions uh, involved. It is important to notice that uh, this idea of the European alliances has to do, and it is par part of a broader European strategy for the universities. And this common strategy is based upon some figures that I'd like to share with you now. We have in Europe around 5,000 higher education institutions. We have more than 17 million tertiary education students. We have around 1.4 million of people involved in teaching activity in our higher education institutions. We have around 1.2 million researchers in Europe. And uh, when we consider these figures, we, can, we, sh we should consider the, the relevance of having, uh, of building and of developing a, a, a common strategy for these institutions, for these people and for these, these countries. Uh, the European Commission is more and more making uh, clear these uh, uh, strategies, this strategy. And this strategy, as, as it is stated by the, by, by, by the Commission, uh, very clear uh, uh, objectives. Uh, I'd like to mention them uh, at this moment. Uh, uh, this strategy aims to strengthen the European dimension in higher education and research. It aims to support universities as lighthouse of our European way of life, and this is particularly relevant when we are facing the situation uh, currently involving uh, Ukraine in, in, in Europe and all the, um, the challenges and the threats that are pending over our way of life. It's also an objective of this strategy to empower universities as actors of change in the green and digital transitions, and all we know how relevant these transitions are to uh, uh, envisage a new future for our countries and for our uh, institutions. And finally, uh, 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 the Commission also states that this strategy uh, aims to reinforce universities as drivers of Europe's global uh, role and, uh, and uh, leadership. So this is the general frame in which this project of the university, the European universities evolved and, and is supposed to evolve in the, in the, new, near, future, the near future. And uh, it is actually one of the flagships of these, of these initiatives. As you, as you may know, we have now uh, uh, 41 European uh, universities installed already. Uh, and the aim is to have around 60 alliances by the mid of 2024. Of course, there are other flag initiatives, such as the case of this, the establishment of legal status for the, for the, alliance, the alliances, and Arcus is dealing also with, with this, this issue, or the establishment of joint European degrees, and Arcus is doing a very good job at this, at this respect. And uh, as it is, and this is the, the, uh, the other very important flagship to scale up the European Student Card uh, Initiative. When we consider all these aspects, we in the University of Minho, we can see how important for us is to participate in this, in this alliance. And I must thank, uh, at this precise moment, uh, uh, the invitation that was uh, made to us, and it was made uh, by uh, the rector uh, of, of the University of Granada and the vice rector who is with us uh, today. Thank you, uh, 
very much, Dorothy, and uh, my, my, my thanks also to, to Aranda for, for the invitation and for this opportunity to participate within this group of uh, uh, strong universities composed by Granada, by Graz, by Leipzig, by Lyon, by Padua, by Vilnius, and by Wroclaw that joined approximately the same time that we did Arcus Arcus uh, Alliance. So we uh, uh, joined a, a group that was uh, already running, but I must say that we were very well, very well received in this in this context. Uh, and thank you, and thank you uh, uh, for that. Of course, that we are strongly committed to development of Arcus Alliance, and we know uh, uh, that we have uh, strong strong challenges in front and in front of us. The first is to make this project grow, to make this project uh, flourish, uh, uh, and uh, the second, not independent of the first one, of course, is to make it relevant, to make it relevant for for all all our uh, communities, and it is at this respect this idea of. Uh, making the Arcus relevant for all, that uh, uh, Arcus Hour uh, gains its more important uh, sense. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Manuel, uh, Manuel João, for all the work that you, you, you've been uh, doing around this, the, this project. Thank you also, uh, Duarte, for your uh, involvement and students' involvement in Arcus Alliance. Arcus Alliance is not possible, will not be possible if, you, if we don't have all the students of our community strongly committed to its development. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Rui. I'll hand over to Duarte. I'm going to switch on over. Hello, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. As it's been said, my name is Duarte Lopes. I preside over the Student Union of the University of Minho. Uh, and I'm very happy to, to be here representing my colleagues uh, in, it, in its moment, which is our first University of Minho uh, initiative with Arcus. Uh, as uh, Professor Rivera Castro was saying, uh, I would point out that the biggest challenges within these alliances uh, are to make it internally relevant uh, and not just an idea that it circulates around a few people around each of the universities of the alliances. And that's either the leaderships, but also the students. Uh, and that's the, one of the biggest challenges. I will say that after that, the biggest challenge is evidently to fulfill that, with that which are the objectives of the, the European Commission, to build a fully fledged European university uh, with joint academic offer, with collaboration in research and with mobility and all of those uh, European values that we know and like and want to promote in these uh, alliances. I would say when it comes to student movement and student representation, uh, Portugal, unfortunately, uh, has been slow to catch up to, to the phenomenon of internationalization. We are making our efforts. Uh, I've been talking to my colleagues saying how important it is and that, uh, and how I usually say it is, you can't demand, you, mu you must take, if you can, responsibility to make it happen. And that was one of the biggest motives for which I went to Padua and why I wanted to be involved in the Arca Student Council, uh, because if we demand, we must be able to contribute to get to that goal. Uh, and as it is so, um, the future of higher education, the European University, uh, as it is the future, it does need students. I'm sure uh, that these universities will change a lot. Uh, I'm also confident in saying that one thing that I hope does not change is that the students remain at the center of higher education, of university policy, uh, as it is absolutely fundamental for it uh, to happen. Uh, students uh, will be available, students must be available uh, to be a part of this next phase of higher education. The Commission has sent uh, the, the objectives, has sent a challenge. Uh, students must rise up to that occasion. Uh, to that end, uh, I've been talking, in fact, that was very lately, uh, in an event of another European alliance because of Arcus, and I do thank their opportunity to meet my colleagues. Um, and students are, they are doing their part. Uh, I, I was in Austria, in another alliance, I could see 
the involvement. I could see how much students want to make this a reality. Uh, we do need to strive for as much uh, student representation and input as we can. Uh, students must have a voice. Uh, and also, uh, I would also say, not just about ARCAS, uh, but European alliances as a whole, uh, we must, as students, and hopefully with the help of our colleagues, our peers, our professors, administrative staff, uh, fight for the rights of students in these universities, of these alliances, as, for example, we know that ARCAS is uh, a good example for what I've seen of student representation in a sense, where students are representative in pretty much every line of discussion and decision making and have a vote um, and are motivated to participate. Well, I've seen alliances where that's not the same, where there are no student representations at all, representation at all, or if there are, uh, they're not motivated, they're not financed, they, or they don't have a vote. Uh, so I do congratulate ARCAS. It makes me, it pleases me very much that our university joined uh, an alliance that could understand why student representation is so relevant and why it must be prevalent to decision making. Uh, this will be my intro. Uh, I hope to, to talk a bit more next. Thank you very much. Thank you to our rector. Thank you to our president of the Students Association. And now I think we're very curious to hear about uh, what ARCAS is. So Dorothy, I believe you will take the lead. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Manuel Rao. Thank you, Duarte, for your introductory words. And thank you very particularly for this wonderful initiative. For the wonderful initiative of organizing this Arcus Hour, this series of opportunities for people who have been working in Arcus to explain what we've been doing, why we've been doing it where the challenges lie and where we feel we have been successful. It's a fantastic initiative and I'm delighted to see that we are also joined today, not only by colleagues from the University of Minho, but also from the University of Roswaf, our other new partner. And I would also like, before we, we move on to a, a short presentation on what ARCOS is, is all about, I would also like to thank you, Rector, and also our colleagues in, in Wrocław for accepting our invitation. Um, we have been months that we have been working together. The huge added value of bringing in two further partners to the Alliance, new perspectives, both from the west of Europe, the far west of Europe in your case, and from the east of Europe in the case of Rosla. So thank you very, very much for that indeed. Uh, we have a short presentation. I shall attempt to keep it short um, to give an overview of what ARCAS is all about. I think the rector has already given a very, very good overview of the situation in European higher education. Um, and I think it's it, it was not my coincidence that President Macron of an initiative based on higher education, based on higher education as a potential driver for the future of Europe, for the future of European values and for the future of Europe's place in the world, in science and technology in social um, aspects also. Um, I think it is also no coincidence that the European Commission rapidly took up the idea which President Macron launched in a famous speech now in the Sorbonne in the autumn of 2017, where he spoke of setting up 20 European universities by 2024. And here we are in 2022 with already 41 alliances established, shortly to become approximately, we calculate 45, and by 2024, as the rector said, approximately 60. 
So clearly a movement which European universities were ready for. I think there was some hunger for an initiative of this kind, which really could constitute a driver for transformation in European higher education. Um, the success clearly, as we said, being that there are already 41 alliances working with initially 280 partners, but looking at recent expansion of the current alliances, we are probably approaching 350, maybe a little bit more already, which is, which is really an important part of European higher education. So who are we in Arcus? In Arcus, we currently bring together nine long-standing comprehensive research universities who share extensive experiences in joint projects and a common profile as inst internationalized institutions with deep regional engagement in medium-sized cities. So you will see the only capital city university in our alliance is Vilnius, capital of Lithuania, but as our colleagues from Vilnius always say, it's a small capital of a small country, um, so a medium-sized city. Um, and I think the, the rector has already mentioned, which is very briefly to run through the other members of the alliance, the University of Wrocław in Poland, who joined us very recently at the same time as the University of, of Minho, the University of Leipzig in Germany, the University of Graz in Austria, the University of Padua in the north of Italy, as the rector said, our grandmother, grandfather, celebrating 800 years anniversary this year, the University of Lyon in France, University of Minho hosting us today, and the University of Granada in the south of Spain. We were joined for the first three years of our initiative also by the University of Bergen in Norway. The University of Bergen is currently therefore a member of the Alliance until the end of the current funding period when they have decided not to continue. The Alliance right from the very beginning under the Erasmus Plus program, established six areas of priority action. And I think these are very closely related to our values. I'll come back to our values and to our major goals. The first of these areas that is that of widening access, inclusion, and diversity. Um, because we believe very, very strongly that higher education should be open, accessible, inclusive, and diverse as our societies are, and in that way respond to growing uh, diversity and needs for, for inclusion. Not only in access to university, but also in the classroom. And I will use that to link to our second major area of activity, which is student-centered frameworks for quality learning. This initiative clearly has as one of its major goals, the transformation of teaching and learning, the enhancement, the improvement of teaching and learning, bringing it into line with societal needs and also making sure that it is truly student-centered. The third area in which we decided to focus our efforts is again linked to inclusion, diversity, and that is the multilingual and the multicultural university. These are true central values of the European continent. Europe is a very diverse continent, diverse linguistically, diverse culturally, and we believe that higher education has an important role in the defense of that diversity as an element for inclusion and for global understanding, so important in the current moment when, as the Rector has already mentioned, we are living very, very close to an armed conflict in our continent. The fourth area where we felt we could contribute to the transformation of our universities 
is that of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship in the broadest sense, including social innovation, entrepreneurial spirit, creativity of our students and of all of our staff. And this, of course, closely linked to the regional commitment of all of our universities. I know this is something which is particularly dear to the University of Minho, the role of the university in the development of the local socioeconomic ecosystem. In order to do that, we recognized right from the very beginning the central role of research, not just education, but also research. And in developing our research and in enhancing our research, the importance of early stage researchers. So basically the doctoral cycle, but also postdocs, so young researchers in general at our universities at a time when academic careers are complex, complicated, require a complex set of competences, which it is not always easy for our young researchers to develop without assistance. And this all comes together with the concept of engaged European citizenship, promoting European values, promoting European values through joint collaborative work. Um, and we have a, an action line devoted to this concept of engaged European citizenship, where we have been working on the development of collaboratory programs, joint international collaboratory programs, which I'll come back to a little bit later on. In a second stage of our development, we were able to add an actual research and innovation action to our overall action plan as new funding became available. And we're very, very grateful to the European Commission for understanding that universities are not just teaching institutions, but that for universities, teaching and research necessarily go hand in hand in order to fulfill our societal mission. And we are very, very happy also, as I said, to have been able to add research and innovation at a policy level at this stage to our activities. I will very, very briefly just look at this slide because this is a little bit how we see our activity in Arcus. The name Arcus um, comes from a fusion, a merger of the two spellings in Latin of the word Arcus for arch, bridge, um, which should, of course, either be spelt with a C, A-R-C-U-S, or with two U's, A-R-Q-U-U-S. We decided to merge the two to form the name Arcus, and you will see that central Q, the central Q in our name representing quality, of course, on the one hand, but also representing dialogue. You will see that we have made it into a little conversational bubble there. Um, so dialogue for quality would be also part of our, of our values. And we very often use the metaphor construction within the urban practice to, to describe the transformation that we are trying to achieve. So our phase one, which has basically been from when we started to, to work together um, in 2018, until the end of this year, 2022, has very much been laying foundations. Laying foundations, getting to know each other well, better than we already knew each other, because of course, all of us already knew each other from various different projects, student mobility and collaborative projects, both in teaching and learning and in research. But in order to build the level of integration, the level of jointness, which is expected in this initiative, in this European University initiative, we really needed to develop much um, So we've been getting to know each other in order to develop that mutual trust. We've been piloting activities and we've been developing joint resources to help us now in our next phase, which is the phase we hope to launch on the 1st of October this year, phase two, 
where we will gradually be building upon those foundations, erecting the basic structures, the pillars and the walls, upscaling and institutionalizing the various actions that we've been working on so far, aspiring to become a true European university, a forward-looking, modern, transformational institution. In order, perhaps, to bring this a little bit down to the ground and give some concrete examples, um, I'd just like to run through very, very quickly some of the activities that we have been carrying out uh, over the past three years, most of which will have continuity in the next stage of alliance activity. Um, one of the first is staff development. Um, we are very, very aware that there is a need if we are to transform our institutions for staff development, both for academic staff, to enhance the way in which we as academics work in a diverse, inclusive classroom, um, but also for our administrative staff in order to further develop their professional competences, and in particular in relation to working together as an alliance and not simply in a single institution. If I could just mention in passing one very recent initiative here, I could mention a MOOC which has been developed in Arcus on challenge-based teaching and learning. And this is a MOOC to help academic staff to develop um, their methodologies in order to work from a challenge-based approach. The second area that I think is very illustrative of what we've been doing and what we hope to continue to do, and as I said, to upscale, is open mobility. One of the first agreements which we signed when we set up the Alliance was that of mobility for all, with no need for direct bilateral agreements between degree programs, between faculties, between departments, but rather for all of our students and all of our staff to be able to move as freely as possible in a variety of traditional, but also innovative, non-traditional modalities. And I'm thinking here in particular, of course, due to the pandemic, of virtual exchange, I'm thinking of hybrid exchange, blended exchange, but also short-term mobility for students and staff, work-based, work-enhanced learning, service learning, and so on and so forth. Fostering joint research, over the past three years, we have organized a series of research focus forums in a series of areas identified by our universities as being of common interest, um, particularly in the fields of digital transformation, artificial intelligence, climate change, and Green Deal, but not exclusively, um, where we have put a focus on PhD candidates and early stage researchers in the hope that they will establish lasting networks for um, joint future research. We've also worked at policy level with papers either already published um, or in preparation on issues such as equality, inclusion, sustainable development goals, the recognition of non-formal and informal learning, language policy, open science, and so on. The rector mentioned earlier the work which we have been carrying out on joint programs. And I think I will just mention very, very briefly that we've been working firstly in the fairly traditional area of full cycle joint programs. So we have already signed agreements at alliance level to set up a joint master's program in European studies, but also very well developed is a joint master or very well advanced in its planning is a joint master's program in cybersecurity. And thirdly, a multiple degree program in the area of translating and interpreting. 
As I said, that in the more traditional form of joint programs, which we will, of course, now upscale and institutionalize even further, but also in more innovative forms of short cycle learning, short courses leading to micro credentials, summer schools, and so on. Because we feel that this kind of short term joint program is perhaps the basis of the transformation of academic offer at our universities, moving beyond the, the Bologna structure of bachelor, master's and doctoral programs, which of course will always be there and which is essential, but which clearly needs to be complemented with lifelong learning and other forms of, of learning, which are more flexible um, and can easily be personalized. And finally, we've been developing, as I said, some shared resources. We are working on a catalogue of research infrastructure, which um, we can share with our partner universities. We've been sharing online courses, our MOOCs, our language courses. We will be sharing learning objects through a repository. We've been sharing the use of our incubators for startups, for spin-offs, and so on. All of this at a pilot level, now to be upscaled in order to move forward. I think Fernando will briefly. Um, I don't think I'm going to read the whole slide because I, I imagine that this will also be available to you. I think I saw on the table in front of Manuel and Duarte that you have the mission statement and you have the open science document in front of you. Um, but I think just very, very briefly to say that our vision in our revised mission statement for the next 10 years, 2022 to 2032, is that of a forward-looking, open, integrated, research-driven European university building transformative excellence with and for all. So as you can see, our central values of inclusion, excellence, transformation, openness are very, very clearly there. Um, yeah, I'm going to move forward as fast as I, as I can. As I said, I'm not going to read our major goals, um, but I think it's, it's important to underline that our major goals are transformational. Our idea is to transform our individual universities, but also to establish a level of higher education cooperation, which has not existed so far in, in Europe. Very, very briefly, this diagram attempts to reproduce the future of our work together. And I'll just mention a couple of aspects of the future of our work together. And that is picking up a little bit on what Duarte said at the beginning, you will see that people are very much at the center of what Arcus wants to do. So our three major communities, students, academic staff, both teaching staff and research staff, and all of our professional staff who together form university community are at the very, very center of all of our activities. The activities take the form, of course, of the three major university missions, um, teaching and learning, on the one hand, research as our second major mission, research and innovation. In between those two, talent development, because the doctoral cycle is always a bridge between teaching and learning and research. And very, very importantly, knowledge exchange, societal engagement through many, many different areas of work. But we would like to underline perhaps lifelong learning, work integrated learning entrepreneurship and societal engagement in general. All of these were three major enablers that we hope to promote even further in the future. Inclusion and diversity, plurilingualism and intercultural competence and mobility. And with three thematic, very, very interdisciplinary thematic uh, pillars, the first, artificial intelligence and digital transformation, the second, climate change and Green Deal, the third, European heritage and identity. 
And I think with that, given the time available to us, I will not go into any further detail about our work plan. This is our next Erasmus Plus work plan. On the next slide, we have the current Horizon 2020 work plan and our governing structure. But if you will allow me just very, very briefly, a couple of words about our governance structure, because I think it's important. And picking up a little on what Duarte said at the beginning of the session, right from the very beginning, Arcus um, was very, very clear on the need to have student participation, active student participation, setting up the student council, but not as a separate body. The student council then participates in the steering committee, participates in the decision-making processes of the Alliance. And we felt that that was very, very important. But also important on this slide is the multi-level governance structure. Arcus, if it is to work, and I think all of you have made this point in your introductory words, requires the engagement, the involvement, the commitment of our university communities, of students, of academics, of professional staff. And the multi-level governance structure is designed in fact, to promote that. And I think with that, apologies if I have spoken for a little longer than I should have, but I hope I have at least given uh, a general idea of what Arcus is all about. Thank you very much, Dorothy. Uh, you certainly presented a very huge project in not a very much time, and I think you were very clear and very broad, so thank you a lot for that. Uh, I think now we'll open the floor for questions. Uh, we have here, uh, presently, we have presidents of our organic units. We have people that take part in the project. We have students. And I know that online, we also have quite a few people that might, may, might ask some questions. So I would now invite anyone who wishes to actually pose a question to our panel that to do so at this moment. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm not seeing any, anyone sending me a sign from online. So I think we're going to start from the inside. So I'm, ask, I'm wondering if someone here in the audience would like to ask something, or if I start with something. OK, I shall start. Okay. So Dorothy, part of your uh, messages refer to words like transformation and words like working together. So I'm assuming that people who are contacting the Alliance for the first time really are maybe asking themselves, but how can I do it? So for example, uh, if I'm a student or if I'm a professional staff, for example, which are perhaps sometimes uh, the, within our communities, those that tend to be less, um, less involved in these big internalization, internationalization projects, which may not of course be always the case, but it may be the case. How do you, th how do you suggest and what has been your experience of how can we put your something of your ideas, your voices into Arcus? Okay, I think there are two major ways, but I'm sure there are also other minor ways of, of participating. I think the two major channels for participating, which we have we have established, in um, on the one hand belonging to the various different task forces which have been set up across the Alliance in a very, very wide variety of activities. So right from setting up collaboratory programs, as I said, to working on how to further support excessive, ex exceedingly gifted students, for example, through their studies, to how to develop plurilingualism in our classrooms, to how to set up um, a student junior company and ensure then that it internationalizes. So all of these various different actions, which are driven by international task forces with representatives at all the universities. The second major way of participating is through the various different calls. And this is something which we hope to intensify a great deal in the second phase of ARCUS. Um, that is um, opening up to the population, to the community and each of our universities, possibilities to apply for small scale seed funding or mobility 
or opportunities to work together in areas of their interest. Um, I think it's also very, very important to, to mention that within our governance structure, most of what I commented on was at the international level, but there is also a local level of governance where it is very, very important at each individual university that there should be internal discussion and debate and proposals, which can then be transmitted to the Alliance in a very, very bottom-up way. Uh, some of the best ideas in our new application round have come from members of universities who have simply said, hey, why don't you work in this? This is something we feel you could do. Um, so as I said, through the task forces, through, so through the planned activities, through the calls for proposals, the calls for mobility, but also quite simply approaching the people running ARCAS at your own university and saying, hey, I would really like to work in this and I would like to find an ARCAS partner to help me to do it. And presumably people do that, uh, uh, contacting the local coordinators or stuff like us, as to the colleagues from Minho that are uh, uh, listening us now, Vanessa Alves, she's our project officer here in Minho, she's the one that might direct, direct some of the requests and the ideas that we may have. So thank you for that, Dorothy. So can you step up, Adriana? So Adriana, she's participating on our side on the widening access participate, uh, um, um, work package. And the mic is here, so if you, okay. you could say something. I can. I'm, no, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. You're okay. okay. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for the inspiring presentation. Uh, we are quite excited to, to be part of this, uh, of this uh, wonderful um, uh, initiative. Um, as has been mentioned, there are 41 uh, European universities at the moment, and very soon we'll have some more uh, joining the initiative. Um, you've mentioned so many things that are uh, uh, values and part of the values and the vision of Arcos, but in your opinion, which would be the three main uh, distinctive features of Arcos? Uh, what makes Arcos a little bit different than the others? All of them are trying to transform the bold objective, to transform the European higher education landscape. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you, Adriana. That's a hard question because we are a very transversal alliance. Um, you will see amongst the 41 alliances which exist that some of them are very, very focused on an individual discipline or on one individual issue. When we first came together, our initial debates were very much on how we could move forward as comprehensive universities in a truly transversal, transformative process. Um, so I think if I were to underline three, I think you asked for three major areas. The first would be very clearly inclusion, very, very clearly. The idea that we feel that this should not in any way be an elitist process at any level. That is, it should not be an elitist process at European level. So we very much support the setting up of new alliances and the opening up of existing alliances. Um, secondly, at alliance level, we very much want our activities to be open to all. And also in the transformation processes at our universities, we feel that inclusion is a central, central value. So I think that is very important. I think the second element, which again is a transversal element and it's one of our core values, it's right at the beginning of our list of core values, is that of democratic culture. Um, we strongly believe that the transformation process should be based on developing competences in democratic culture and hope very much in the next phase to roll out a stronger use of the Council of Europe's competence framework for democratic culture. And I think the third element where uh, we are centering our initiatives is very much on the transformation of, of learning very much on the transformation of learning 
for students, piloting innovative methodologies, piloting staff development for innovative methodologies, but not only when we speak of students, and I think this is important, not only thinking of traditional undergraduate students, but thinking of all three cycles and also thinking very, very carefully of lifelong learners. And this, of course, the lifelong learning side of our activity is very, very closely linked to our societal and regional engagement. So I think those would perhaps be the three areas that I would identify. You might get different answers from other members of the Alliance. Thank you, Dorothy. We have a new question from our president of the science school. Uh, you want to try from there, Jose? Yeah, I, I, I believe you could hear me. Can you hear? Uh, I will project my voice. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for this initiative. I'm, I'm here to participate with this comment on a more particular level. So from the bottom up, uh, not from the school, but from a researcher group that has connections with Brockla. Uh, with a specific uh, research group. We are in a, a Marie Curie uh, International Initial Training Network. So I believe this kind of experiences might be, might be good to bring them to the public, to put them in these sessions and, and say that at the low level, we are already connected in many ways. There probably be many, many research groups, many uh, pedagogical experiences that are uh, shared between these nine universities. And for me, it's a particular pleasure to coordinate a network in which Brosla is, is, is a, a partner, is a beneficiary of the network. And over the next two and a half years for this network to be running, and we are already one and a half behind us, has been great to collaborate with, with your colleagues there in Poland our students will make secondments and your students will make secondments here. So this is the low level connection I will uh, like to emphasize. And that might help also that at the top of the institutions, we are able to bring them together and the government governance will make more sense to build this great European university as we realize that from the bottom, we are already well connected. So probably put in value these low level connections to, to motivate others probably to find new connections with other people in other areas that might reinforce our, our, our links. Just this, thank you. Thank you, Jose Mora. Dorothy or Fernando, any comment? Um, absolutely. Um, I, I think when, when we set up the alliance, we of course thought immediately of universities with which we already had connections, connections of all kinds. And I think it's very, very important what you've just said. Not just um, high level connections at, at rectoral or vice rectoral level, but also connections at the level of individual research projects, at the level of individual joint teaching projects, even of individual researchers. Um, and I think one of the very, very considerable side effects and results of the ARCUS activity has in fact been that we have been able to bring a lot of these small individual initiatives together. Um, we've learned a lot internally in each university about what each other does which has been a very interesting learning process. But we've also been able to find synergies between research projects with teaching projects and so on, and really build on those as, as the future of our transformational process. So ab absolutely, couldn't agree more. It's very, very important. And it's not something that we necessarily always do well at universities, this mapping of all the connections which exist internationally, nationally, or even locally. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Dorothy. I'm, I'm just looking at the time and the truth is that the hour of Arcus has one minute left. And so I think it's one of these cases that we have had a really interesting and very important overview of many things that we can do. And now we have all this follow-up learning to do, but then we'll have the follow-up sessions, so which will be great. So I hope we have all now a better notion of what the stage looks like, uh, some actions that we may take, the priorities of the Alliance. 
And then what we'll need to do then is to, in the forthcoming Arcus hours, really try to dig in better, in more detail, according to the specific topic being, dis being discussed, how we can actually contribute. So I'm really sorry, but I'm going to ask you, Dorothy and Fernando, for a final comment, because there's no more time. And then I'll ask also our rector, uh, Rui Duarte just told me that he, would, he, he thinks that he will not necessarily need to intervene at this moment. And then we will, I will try to close the session and announce what's coming up next. Is that okay? That's great, because I've already spoken quite a lot. I'm going to ask Fernando to say just a couple of, of words to, to close from our end here in the corner. Hi again, hello everyone. Yes, yes, thank you very much for this initiative. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Uh, as Vanessa probably is very menial and will tell you the same as I will do, there is a huge team behind the scenes. There is a nice team that is very committed and where any idea is more than welcome. Uh, we are never our sort of ideas. So if there is any initiative coming from any colleague, uh, as uh, you were saying there, Please transmit it through the Arcus channels, through Vanessa, uh, get it to us. We will find a way to make it fit within the current funding or what we have, or to find for, uh, look for after other funding opportunities where we will be able to try to, to make the connections, to support those initiatives and to strengthen the collaboration within the Alliance. Maybe as the example that was raised between Minya and Roslav is a good example where others can be built but also like other connections, as we learned also between Minho and Granada on, or between Minho and Lyon and so on, where we can scale it up to and open it up to other uh, Alliance uh, members. So welcome to the team. And yeah, this is also, this is a teamwork. So this is a, already also part of your daily work. So welcome to the family and, and looking forward to, to collaborate with you all. Thank you very much, Fernando. It's really nice to have you on board and all your team and the great work that you're doing. So we now have a we now have a, a question from YouTube, but I really will apologize and I will direct the question to the session where it may be more relevant and invite the person who submitted it to please come back to us and please keep with us in the following sessions. But I'll now pass the floor to our rector, Rui Vieira Castro. Just, just very, very few words. And to once again to to thank uh, Dorothy and Fernando for their participation. I think it was quite important uh, for for our community to to have them with us explaining the basic assumptions and the future directions for for uh, for Arcos. Of course, to thank also the colleagues from Wroclaw. Uh, and let me tell you that uh, we are open to 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 your participation in the in future uh, Arcos hour sessions. Uh, and uh, to now speaking more internally, uh, I'd like to say to, to my uh, colleagues from, from academic and non-academic uh, staff and, uh, and students that uh, this is a quite important initiative to make this, uh, uh, this alliance known to everyone and to get and try to get everybody involved in its in its development it's a very important initiative for the university it is a very important initiative for the portuguese higher education system and for europe so we need to be all strongly committed with this uh, initiative that as, as, as i mentioned before is central for the development of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, a renewal of uh, european idea about what universities should be so thank you very much, and I hope to meet you in the next session. Thank you uh, to our rector, Rui Vieret Castro. I am uh, really now have to think about closing this session, and but I will do that after I recall everyone that uh, Arcus Hour will continue. We will have new sessions in one week from today at the same hour on the 8th of June, and then we will have uh, one which is not on the following week because we, we have a, a meeting and we cannot present on the 15th, but we'll have an Arcus Hour on the 14th, on the 22nd, on the 29th, and we'll end on the 6th of July. So almost every Wednesdays at the same time, 2.30 p.m. Lisbon time, uh, uh, 3.30 p.m. Central European time, uh, we will be around. The next session will be about widening access, inclusion, and diversity, 
and we will have with us the Action Lines chairs and co-chairs from the University of Padova. And we'll also have time to talk about entrepreneurial university and regional engagement, again, with the chair and vice chairs, which I have not met personally, but I will say that they are from the University of Lyon. Is that correct? Great, I hit it, I hit it right. Good, that's good. Then, so please watch out for the program. We'll be circulating it, it will be available. Each of us has, of course, interests, a general interest in making Arcus a success, but each of us has, of course, a specific role in this or that area that is more related to what our daily lives and with our mission inside our schools, inside our departments, inside our departments in the students' unions. So please come back. It has been a pleasure to be with you all. Hope you all enjoyed the session here and online. Thank you for those who decided to come and stay with us. Thank you for those who are online. And see you in one week in, the, in another Arcus Hour. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel Juan. And bye-bye to you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So <clears throat> goodbye.